Well, God bless you, House of Praise family. This is Pastor Steve on another Thirsty Thursday online. And boy, am I excited about tonight. Uh, God has been so good in revealing so many good things to us. And um, he's been speaking into my heart. I've been spending a lot of time in the presence of God before I come talk to you, of course, as I often tell you that. And it's the truth. Uh, we really do spend a lot of time in the presence of God, and I wish we could even do more, but it's been wonderful what we have had. It's a beautiful day in the presence of God. As Al Maya often says on Sunday morning, it's a beautiful day for Jesus to come back. And boy, isn't that the truth? Any day would be wonderful for that, but of course, God knows the right time, and uh, he knows exactly what, uh, you know, the, the right timing you know, of all of that is. And uh, we have so many loved ones that we're praying for and believing God that they will be reached so that they will not miss the rapture of the church. Amen. So anyway, the Lord has been really good to us in revealing some very precious things as we've been studying uh, this little prayer with a giant prize. And uh, I, I'm just very excited about what God's given me tonight. So let's start with prayer and God will give us a good night. I know that. Lord, in the name of Jesus, bless our thirsty Thursday together tonight. And Lord, I pray that you will bless everybody that has taken the time to tune in to the YouTube premiere tonight so that we can grow and develop and get closer to you and understand the word of God better. Get revelation in the word like we talked about on Sunday. The revelation in the cup of blessing. What a powerful time that was. And Lord, you have so much more for us. So we speak a blessing on everybody tonight. And Lord, I pray that you will, Father, give me divine wisdom as I impart the word of God tonight. Can't do it without you, Lord. I only do it through you, by the power of the Spirit. It is not by might, it is not by power, anything within me, but only by my Spirit, in Jesus' name. Amen. So God bless you. You know, the first request that we talked about was, uh, Oh Lord, would you bless me indeed? Uh, Lord, I cry out to you, bless me, impart your supernatural favor upon me. Do for me what I cannot do for myself releasing blessing from your storehouse that has been deposited there by your unmerited grace and your favor. Oh, wow. And while you're doing it, do it in abundance. What an incredible prayer this was. And, uh, you know, while you're releasing this glory, while you're releasing this blessing, do it in abundance. Make it extra special. Make it more and better than I can even ask or think because I know that this is your very nature, okay? And you are pleased with my seeking your favor and your blessing. So that was the first one. That was a powerful, go back to the YouTube library, at House of Praise YouTube library, and you'll find that message there. The second uh, request, which was last Thursday night, was, oh, that you would enlarge my territory. Lord, expand my opportunities, give me greater vision, increase my responsibility and my resources. Uh, move through divine intervention that alters natural forces and becomes a welcome event that is not explicable by natural or scientific laws. This increase will be considered a work of a divine being. Amen. Lord, do for me what I cannot do for myself. And uh, that was last week. So you want to go back and, and uh, uh, make sure that you have had time to, to go over that. Oh, that you would enlarge my territory. Praise God. Today is the third request of this incredible prayer, this little prayer with a giant prize. And today uh, we're going to look at, oh, that your hand would be upon me. Almighty Father God, I need your help. I need your help. So this is crying out to God for his help. The second that we are not feeling dependent upon God, God showed me this, it is the same second that you will have backed away and are not truly walking and living by faith. We were never created to be separate from God. We were never created to not be connected with him. As God's chosen, we are uh, expected to attempt uh, large things, uh, difficult things, if you will, that failure would be certain unless God steps in. 
Okay, let me read that again. This is good revelation. As God's chosen, we are expected to attempt something very large, enough that is that failure would be certain unless God steps in. That's what we're talking about here tonight. Think about your life, whether it's in your finances, your business, raising your family, your ministry, no matter what it is, whatever it is in your life, God wants to step in. And remember, unless he steps in, we're not going to make it. Let's take a little closer walk with him tonight. The Lord has been saying that to me. I keep on hearing it in my spirit. Try to comprehend how contrary this truth is to everything that you would normally feel or choose. Think about this, okay? Try to comprehend how contrary this truth is to everything that you would normally feel or choose. It goes against common sense. It contradicts your previous experiences, okay? It seems to disregard your feelings and your training. It sets you up to look incompetent. Yes, all those things are true. God is reaching out uh, to make us reliant upon him. He wants to do so much for us. Uh, we were never created to be separated from him. Man chose that separation at the fall, remember? Remember, man chose the what? Tree of knowledge of good and evil, and he chose that instead of the tree of life. So the situation that we're in, obviously, is not God's original plan. Uh, Christ did not come to show us how powerful God is. I mean, that is so obvious. So all we have to do is look at creation. So all we have to do is just look at the birth of a child, uh, just look at the miracle of Jesus Christ. He came to demonstrate what Father God could and would do through a man or a woman that was totally submitted to him. That's what he came to show. He came to show. We all already understand uh, the magnificence of the omniscient, omnipotent Father God. Tragic as it may sound, the hand of the Lord is so seldom experienced by even mature Christians. And this is something that God showed me and it brought like sadness to my heart that they don't even miss it and seldom ask for it. Self-dependence is very common. Self-dependence is very common and is more the norm than the exception. So we're here to speak into that issue here in the church. Let's take a closer walk with him. The hand of the Lord is a biblical term for God's power and presence in our life. We're saying, Lord, keep your hand upon me. Lord, I need your help. I cannot do this myself. I need your help. In Joshua 4, 24, that all the people of the earth may know the hand of the Lord, that it is mighty, that ye may fear the Lord your God forever. In Isaiah 59, 1, Behold, the Lord's hand is not short, that it cannot save, nor his ear too heavy, that it cannot hear. In Acts eleven twenty one, And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed and turned to the Lord. Jesus' parting words were, Lo, I am with you always. And that's in Matthew 28. 19 to 20, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. And he was referring to the end of the church age, of course, because then he would come back and the rapture of the church would be here. And of course, we would be reunited with Christ. So even to the end of the age, meaning the church age, amen. Let's talk about the encounter with the Holy Spirit. You know, this is impossible to be done without an encounter with the Holy Spirit. And one of our most famous verses that we enjoy so much, Acts 1.8, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witness to me, uh, witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all of Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Okay, the key part of that, that passage, which we want to put an emphasis on, Acts 1.8, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Amen. 
say power when the Holy Spirit has come upon us. Remember, we're asking God as part of this prayer. We're saying, Lord, keep your hand upon me. Lord, I need your help. I can't do this alone. Acts 4.13, now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated, untrained men, they marveled and they realized that they had been with Jesus. They had been in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Acts 9.27, but Barnabas took him, who was Saul at that point, Saul of Tarsus, later to be Paul, and brought him to the apostles, and he declared to them, the, the apostles, how he had seen the Lord Jesus in the road, and that he had spoken to him, and how he, Saul, okay, had preached boldly in Damascus in the name of Jesus. Barnabas was aware of what happened at uh, that time on the road to Damascus, and, uh, and he was explaining it to the rest of the apostles who weren't really convinced yet because he was not popular in Jerusalem, as we know, because of his past. But God was going to change all that. You know, Jacob had an encounter with God. And this is something I, I've got to refer to here. I can't not refer to, to Jacob's encounter with God. Let's go to Genesis now, 32. So Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. Okay, think about this. And when the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. And then the man said, let me go for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go until you bless me. I will not let you go. Jacob was determined that he was going to connect with God, that encounter with God. How determined are you to connect and have an encounter with God? The man asked him, what is your name? And Jacob uh, said, my name is Jacob. Then the man said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, okay, which meant prince, okay, because you have struggled with God and with humans and have overcome. And then Jacob said, please tell me your name. And then he replied, why do you ask me my name? Then he blessed him there. So Jacob called the place Peniel saying, it is because I saw God face to face and yet my life was spared. The key part of that passage that I wanna make an emphasis on is when Jacob said, I will not let you go until you bless me. That's the attitude we've got to have. We've got to come to the altar, so to speak, whether it's the altar in your, in your bedroom, in your living room, in your home, or at the church on a Sunday morning. I know one time I went to the altar uh, at the Assembly of God Church that I was serving at at the time, and I actually made that same statement. I said, Lord, I am not going to leave this altar until I see you. I will not leave this altar until I hear your voice. And that was a determination that I had that day. What an incredible, and I have a remembrance of that like it was yesterday. And that was probably, my guess is back around 1987, maybe, I don't know, maybe the early 90s, I'm not sure exactly, but it goes back a ways, that's for sure. You know, God really loves it when we ask to, to have his hand upon us, when we ask him for help, when we ask him for something, it really pleases God, and it's really, really important to understand that. In Matthew 7, 11, If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good gifts to those who ask Him? Amen. That's Matthew 7, 11. Have you ever noticed how often Jesus mentioned the word ask? He said, ask, seek, and knock. A-S-K, ask, seek, and knock, amen. Jesus tells us that God loves to give good gifts to whom? To those who ask. And he said, ask and ye shall receive. There is something about asking that God really likes, amen. The Lord wants us to ask him for good things and it pleases him. You know, James tells us that and, and uh, we have not because we ask not, okay? And how many times have we quoted that? We have not because we uh, ask not. Perhaps asking puts us in a place of dependence upon the Lord. Isn't that the truth? Rather than being self-sufficient or presumptuous, 
when we ask God for something, it is a humble acknowledgement that we are needy and he is our good and benevolent father. Amen. Willing to give us the things that we desire. Think about it. God is a good, good father. He is more generous than the very best human father we could even imagine. Amen. The Lord is not a withholder. He is not stingy. Like any loving human father enjoys giving good, good things to his children, our heavenly father is that much more. Okay, when it comes to giving. In fact, the Bible tells us that God, our Father, is love and love gives. Amen. Love gives. We are the most like Christ when we give. We are the most like Christ when we give. Amen. That means that by his very nature, God is a loving giver. By his very nature, God is a loving giver. Sadly, many people don't know much about God's love or willingness to answer our prayers generously, and even fewer seem to know how to what cooperate with him in faith by asking. Amen. I know I've had to ask God to forgive me if I got out of the mode of asking. Sometimes it, it, you can just kind of get used to what's happening and, and you kind of start going with the flow of what's, what's going on in your life and you forget to ask you or, or you get negligent in that. I've had to ask God to forgive me from that. Don't shrink back from asking. You know, remember, this is what? The little prayer with the giant prize. And this is the third request that says, Lord, keep your hand upon me. I need your help. Don't leave me. Amen. Don't shrink back from asking. God wants us to ask for things according to his will, which is his word. The word of God is our measuring stick, is our standard. We talked about standards last Thursday night, and it's really important to have standards and, and make sure that the word of God is very clearly your standard. Listen to this amazing promise. This is the confidence that we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, think about that. If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And we know what, uh, or we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, and we know that we have whatever we ask of him. And that's in 1 John 5, 14 and 15. I'm reading you scripture right out of the New Testament. Are you getting stirred up about maybe asking God for things that are on your heart? Hopefully, these few moments together tonight at this Thirsty Thursday online, hopefully you're getting stirred in your heart that the Lord wants to come upon you and start taking you into the deeper things of God. Amen. God wants us to go deeper tonight, amen, into the realm of eternity. And we'll be talking about that in just a minute. Here are a few more verses to meditate on today and, and then uh, just ask. This is important. Let me give you a few more verses. If any of you lack wisdom, you should ask of God. If any of us need wisdom in our work, in our business, in our finances, with our children, with our grandchildren, in something we need to do around our house or property? Do we need wisdom in something? Or how about just wisdom in, in getting revelation from the Word of God, amen? And wisdom on how to impart the Word in the Gospel to someone who don't knows it, or to share the love of God. It could be spiritually, it could be emotionally, it could be in a physical way. It doesn't really matter. If we lack wisdom, the Word tells us that we should ask God. Okay, who gives generously, generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. There's the promise of God. But when he asks, he must believe and not doubt. So when we ask for this incredible wisdom, when we ask for, the, for God to keep his hand upon us, we must ask and believe. We must ask in faith and not doubt, because he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind, that man should not think that he shall receive anything of the Lord because he is a double-minded man, 
He is a double-minded man, unstable in all that he does, unstable in all his ways, it tells us in the King James. That's James 1, 5 to 8, a very important, powerful passage in the book of James. James 1, 5 to 8. I trust that you have an open Bible and maybe a pencil and paper so you can make some notes here tonight as you're going through this, and I'll send you these notes as I always do in email. You know, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be given you. That's John 15 and 7. The promises of God coming through our Lord Jesus Christ are powerful, really powerful. Again, I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything you ask for, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. Wow, just one passage after the other here. For where two or three come together in my name, there I am with them, and that to bless. Amen. And that's in Matthew 18, 19, and 20. In that day, you will no longer ask me anything. I tell you the truth. My Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Wow, this is just one passage after the other. Until now you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive and your joy will be full or will be complete. That's John 16, 23 to 24. I mean, it's it just powerful stuff here, guys. God told the, or Paul told the Ephesian church to be filled with all the fullness of God. Let's read that in Ephesians 3, 19. Uh, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Not some, not partial, but everything that God has for us. Amen. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. Amen within the inside, your soul, the, the power within your, your human spirit, which, which obviously will leak into your body as well and bring divine health in our bodies as well. The presence of God within us, amen. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Remember, we are the dwelling place of God, amen. So Paul told the Ephesian church to be filled with all the fullness of God. Second Chronicles 16, 9, For the eyes of the Lord range throughout the entire earth to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. One promise after the other. You get the idea here? Are you getting the flow of what the Holy Spirit is saying to us here tonight? I think we need to just go ahead and start asking. Amen. The prayer of Jabez. You know, he, he said, and this is his third request, he said, Lord, keep your hand upon me. Please keep your hand upon me. I need your help. Say this, Father, I'm going to spend some time in your word. I ask you to saturate my heart with your word and your will. Now, I'm kind of setting something up here because this is really important that our mind and our spirit is saturated in the Word of God. I said to you just a minute ago, and I'm going to say it again, I have been negligent from time to time. I'm a very transparent pastor, and you know that. And uh, I'm going to get busy asking more. I know I've been negligent. I've had to ask God to forgive me. And uh, Lord, forgive me for, for not asking like I should and not asking the way I should. Amen. I believe that you will be glorified and my joy will be complete. I know that. And I thank you in advance for answering my prayer in Jesus name. Amen. So I would recommend that each of you would humble yourself and say, Lord, where I have failed to ask you the way I should, where I failed to align my soul with the word of God, where I failed to, uh, you know, get into what God is, is asking us to like grow in, in a in an advanced way, I guess, is the best way to put it. The Lord wants us to advance spiritually, become more spiritually mature. Amen? You know, learning to walk in the realm of eternity is where God wants to take us here. Okay? And I, and I can't, uh, I, I, I just couldn't, uh, you know, not 
completely deliver this particular part of this teaching without talking about this. I, I think we need to talk about this and uh, uh, some can receive this, some can. Ask the Holy Spirit now to help you to receive the Word of God. Because this is going to take you deeper now. The Lord wants to take us into the realm of eternity. That's where Jesus lives, by the way. Amen. He lives in the eternal realm. Eternity past, eternity present, eternity future. He is the omniscient, omnipresent, and omnipotent God. Amen. And now he is inviting us to live in that realm with him. We've got to do that by speaking in agreement with the Word of God. The Word of God is where the standard lies, okay? So we must speak in agreement with the Word of God. There is probably no other subject as important to your healing and your health and, and to experience what Jabez was talking about here. There's probably no other subject as important to this than the principle of calling the things that are not as though they were. We see this in Romans 4, uh, 17 to 22, that Abraham became fully persuaded that God would do what he had promised. The way he became fully persuaded was by calling those things which were not yet manifest as though they were manifest. Amen. In other words, getting in agreement with the promise of God. We pick up on this in verse number 17 of the fourth chapter of Romans. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom ye believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead and calls those things which be not as though they were. Okay, that's Romans 4 and 17. Here Paul is referring back to Genesis, the 17th chapter, and you will notice that God called Abram the father of nations before he had the promised son. And he taught Abram to do the same thing. Okay, now this is important, okay? God had promised Abram a son. And he was old and his wife was old. This was like an impossibility. It would have required an absolute miracle for that to happen. You will notice that God called Abram the father of nations or the father of a multitude before the promised child was there, amen? And he taught Abram to do the same thing. God changed Abram's name to Abraham, which meant father of nations or a father of a multitude, okay? This was, uh, th this is the means that he used to convince Abraham to call for what he did not yet have in reality. To call what he did not yet have in reality. God had established it by promise, but Abraham had to call it into reality by mixing faith with the word of God. He mixed faith with the word of God. Every time he said, I am Abraham, he was calling the things that were not as though they were. Amen. Every time he said, I am Abraham, okay, he was calling the things which were not manifest or uh, even though they did not yet appear. Okay. Abraham did not deny that he was old. No, he didn't go around and say, I'm not old. No, he was old. He was a hundred years old when this all happened because he was, he was old. Amen. But he said, I am Abraham. Okay. Father of nations, father of many, nations, father of a multitude. Amen. This was God's method of helping him change his image, and it caused him to be fully persuaded. Very important thing to understand. God does that in many, many avenues of life, and I do believe that he still does that today in so many ways. I can go into a few examples, but I'm, I think I'm going to pass on that and keep moving here. Paul also gives us insight into this principle in 1 Corinthians 1, 27 and 28. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. That's God's way, guys. This is his way. And base things of the world and the things which are despised hath God chosen, yea, and the things which are not to bring to naught the things that are, 
This is the way God works, and he always works in mysterious ways, and his ways are past finding out. In other words, God uses spiritual forces which are not seen to nullify natural things that are seen. Now listen to what your pastor said there. This is revelation. Revelation. I've been talking a lot about revelation, and we get revelation when we spend time in the presence of God. In other words, God uses spiritual forces which are not seen to nullify natural things that are seen or that you can see. This is the biblical principle of calling things that are not as though they were. Then in 2 Corinthians 4.13, Paul says, We have the same spirit of faith, according to as it is written, I believe, and therefore have I spoken. We also believe, and therefore speak. In other words, when we speak in, a, in agreement with the word of God, it actually causes a cycle to start. Then our faith grows. And as our faith grows, then we continue to speak in agreement with the word of God. And as we speak in agreement with the word of God, then our faith grows. And then it just sets that cycle in motion. Paul is quoting David when he said, I believed and therefore have I spoken. Amen. In Psalm 118, 17, David said, I shall not die, but live and declare the works of, excuse me, the works of the Lord. When it comes to divine healing and when it comes to trusting God for the many different things in our lives that we have to trust him for on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, spiritually being obviously the most important, but thing, things, uh, God cares about everything in your life, guys. He cares about your, your health. He cares about your money. He cares about your relationships. He cares about whether you have joy or not. I mean, he really wants you to have joy, guys. That's the most valued commodity in heaven, okay? Very, very important to understand that. So when it comes to divine healing or anything that would be in that category, this is a vital principle. We should declare to ourselves what God's word reveals about us regardless of the circumstances or how we feel about it at the present time. Amen. That's revelation. We've got to hear that again. We should declare to ourselves and to anyone around us what God's word reveals about us. Okay, what does the word of God say, regardless of what we see, regardless of the circumstances or how we feel about it at this point, at this point in time. In Romans 10, 6 to 8, Paul says that the righteousness, which is of by, uh, which is by faith, says the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That's Romans 10, 6 to 8. Paul says, I'm going to read it again. Paul says that the righteousness, which is of faith, says the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. The key is the word of God. Jesus and the word are one and the same. Jesus said, my words are spirit and they are light. In other words, when his words are spoken, it brings light. L-I-F-E, the opposite of death, the opposite of oppression, the opposite of sickness, the opposite of poverty, the opposite of all those things. Amen. Any kind of oppression of the devil at all, because we have been set free. Jesus has reversed the curse, and therefore we are free from the curse of the law. God's word becomes engrafted into our heart as we speak it. This is important. Now we're talking about this incredible uh, little prayer with a giant prize. We talked about a lot of very important things which built up to this, but I'm ending up this study by focusing on the importance of learning to live in the realm of eternity, amen. And how we do that is that we get in agreement with the word of God. We speak in agreement with the word of God. We think in agreement with the word of God. We declare in agreement with the word of God. We decree in agreement with the word of God. Anytime that we go outside the realm of the word of God, now we're in trouble and now it's going to introduce all types of difficulty, which I don't want to focus on, but that's what happens. Amen. 
There is nothing more important to your faith than declaring what God has said about you. Giving voice to God's word is a method of calling for things that God has given by his promise, and yet we have not yet seen. We have not yet had it manifest. You are establishing what God has said to be true, even though it is not yet a reality in your life. You don't deny that sickness exists. Nowhere does the word of God tell us to do that, but you deny the right, it's right to exist in your body. Amen. You're not denying that sickness exists, okay? You are denying it's right to, to exist in your body. Amen. Because you have been redeemed from the curse of the law and delivered from the authority of darkness. Amen. We have been set free from all of that. We had that incredible lesson right before Resurrection Day where Jesus reversed the curse. Go back and listen to that message and that will be a foundation for what we just said there. You are establishing what God said to you to be true even though it is not yet manifest. You don't deny that you're sick, but you deny the right for that sickness to exist in your body. Amen. Because we have been set free from the curse. Amen. But God's method is to call for positive things, even though they are not yet a reality in your body or in your situation, whatever it may be. You call them until they are manifest. You have a God-given right to exercise authority over your body. Amen. At nighttime, and I, I've shared this with you before. I, I speak over Carol's body. I speak, I, I lay hands on her head and every part of her body down to her feet. And I call divine health into her body. Amen. And then she reverses it back and speaks it over my body. Amen. Every night we do this. And this is really an important thing to do. We, we need to really think about this as to how important it is to get in agreement with the word of God. God's method is to call for positive things, even though they're not yet manifest. Amen. You call them until they are manifest. Amen. You have a God-given right to exercise authority over your body. I call my blood pressure 120 over 80. I call my heart beat to be 50, 60 uh, beats per minute. I, I actually speak over my body. And I, I'm trying to teach you this, the importance of doing this. Romans 8, 13, Paul tells us, If you live after the flesh, you will die. But if you live through the Spirit and do mortify the deeds of the body, you will live. Amen. It's very important. Your flesh wants to say it the way it is. Your flesh wants to say it the way it is. But your spirit if trained properly, wants to say it the way God says it in his word. Your body will respond to the demands of your human spirit. Amen. If you feed the spirit man God's word, it will make demands on the flesh to line up with the word of God. Okay? If you feed the spirit man the word of God, Okay, it will make demands on the flesh to line up with the word of God. No, it won't happen just because you say it, but saying it is involved in causing it to happen. Saying it is the way that you plant the seed. Amen. You plant the seed for what you need. The spoken word of God imparts spirit life into your physical body. And that's according to John 6 and 33. For his word is incorruptible seed. The word of God is incorruptible seed. And it produces after its own kind. Amen. If you plant tomato seeds, you will get tomato plants. If you plant uh, peppers, you will get peppers. If you plant broccoli, you will get broccoli. Amen. This is important. The spoken word of God imparts spirit life, spirit life into your physical body or your situation, whatever it may be, according to John 6 and 33. For his word is incorruptible seed and it produces after its own kind. I challenge you to set aside 
a time by yourself daily to fellowship with God. Make it a practice to meditate on his word by speaking it into your body or into your situation, whatever it may be. Do it two or three times a day, baby. I mean, uh, that's uh, numbers are not the issue here, but you want to do it as much as possible. Everybody understands, everybody's busy, has things to take care of in our lives. And Jesus said, as long as he tarries, we should occupy. And that's for sure, okay? But do it as often as you can. Then double up on your confessions in the area where you have the most problems. It's really important, I believe with all my heart, if you're facing something very difficult in your life, whether it's a physical, financial, or maybe a relationship issue, or, or something that's going on with your family and children, uh, whatever you're facing, uh, the most difficult things are pro is probably the area that God is anointing you to minister to other people, okay, in that area. So you want to think about that as well. Pray the word of God over your body. Declare it to be true until you are fully persuaded. Your body will respond to your voice when it's in alignment with the word of God. Amen. You must mix faith with the word. How much more it will respond to God's word when you speak it in faith. In a conclusion, and we're ready to and we're ready to wrap up here. In conclusion, we are just one plea away from being inexplicable. Spirit enabled exploits. Amen. What God is ready to do through us. I believe that with all my heart. I've been saying that for all of this year. I refuse to go by what I see. I do not go by what I see. You are my way maker, Lord. You are the miracle worker. You are the promise keeper. And even though I can't see you, you are still working. Even though I can't feel you, you are still working. And I know that you're for me. And I know that the blessing of God is resting upon my house. For as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. This is important. By his touch, you can experience supernatural enthusiasm, supernatural joy, supernatural boldness, supernatural power. It's all available. Jesus said, and I taught that just a few weeks ago on his transfiguration as to what that meant and what he was communicating to the church, what he was communicating to the three apostles at that point, and uh, subsequently to all of us that the glory of God can be made manifest through the church. Amen. There is no question about it. And it's beyond what anything we can ask or think. It's beyond that. It's way beyond that. You know, for the Christian, dependence on him is just another word for power. And that's what the Lord gave me as I wrap this up here tonight on Thursday, Thursday. For the Christian, dependence on him is just another word for power. God wants us to ask. He wants us to seek him. He wants us to knock and then expect. Amen. The glory of God is resting upon you. And I speak the glory of God on you tonight in every part of your life, in every part of your health. I speak divine health over your body right now. I speak divine health over your children and over your grandchildren. Amen. Wherever there's needs to be something that needs to be healed, oh God, I speak divine healing. And then, Lord, where if healing is not needed, I speak divine health in the name of Jesus. I speak divine provision. I speak divine, the, the glory of God being manifest through love and through honor and through all the blessings of God that he wants to pour out on us because that's just his nature. Jabez paid... Uh, prayed this prayer because he understood the nature of God. It's God's nature to love because he is love. It's God's nature to bless because he wants to bless us. It's God's nature to help us because he is indeed our helper. God bless you all. We love you. And I trust that this has been a blessing to so many here tonight and pray that God's blessing will be on it as well as we put it out on the internet so that many others can be blessed as well. Have a wonderful night. God bless you all. We'll see you all on Sunday morning and uh, God's going to give us a wonderful day on Sunday. It's going to be powerful. Watch for emails and texts. There's some good things really coming up very shortly. God bless you. We love you. Bye for now.